And it's that time of year again, our annual sit down pre-camp with Cincinnati head coach, Luke Fickle coach. Um, it's how do you follow <laughs> what you did a year ago? I mean, that's, that's where you have to start, right? Yeah. Like you, you, you built this thing to incredible heights. Now, how is it, how's it maintained? I mean, every year is new and every year is different. And I think more than anything, you know, we love, you know, all the positives and the things that have happened, but it's in the rear view mirror. And, um, you know, at least good fortunes is we've done this, you know, the last few years where we've had some some success <clears throat> and we're able to kind of continue to move forward and, and know that each and every year is a little bit different. So um, well, obviously there's a lot of newer guys, but there's still a lot of guys that have been here uh, that understand how that, you know, ability to kind of take the next step. And um, each year is, you know, a life within itself that, uh, you know, we just use, you know, last year as a, as a learning uh, curve and experience and a lot of great experiences, but um, that we gotta, you know, we gotta, we gotta start this over and just be us now. Does the messaging change? How does the messaging change? And is there a fight against? Like I know in the NFL, they call it the Super Bowl hangover. Is there a fight against like reaching well, the mountain? There's all. I think more than anything, it's all the entitlement. You're always fighting against. Once you've had some success, you always fight against that, and that that's. You know, we came here, we, we can't shy away from it because when we came here, that we didn't have to worry about that. We had to worry about, you know, the doubts and the people um, telling you and reminding you of things that you couldn't do. And, and like I always said, that's a great motivator. And then the ability to, to turn things around and have some success and, and win a championship. And then it becomes a little bit of the, you know, entitlement and this is what's expected. And, and guys start to, you know, if they do you know, change their mentality and, and believe that this is just something that is going to happen every year, um, that's when you have problems. So for us, we've been able to go through this, I think, you know, in different ways. And, and it's just another opportunity for us to grow with, in that sense, with some different people. Has the, the COVID thing actually been a blessing for you guys? I mean, you've been able to, to, to keep guys around maybe a little bit longer than expected. It is. I think that you always try to find the positives and the things that have happened. And um, in some ways, the you know, be able to have Jabari and, and, you know, whether it's Malik Van and, and Wilson Huber and those guys back for another year because, you know, they were afforded that because of the, the COVID season, I think is great. Um, but I think even as you look back at those experiences more than anything, it's done more for a program. Just tough times, you know, make you do one of two things. You either crumble or you grow. And um, that time, I think, for our program did nothing but help us grow and uh, really kind of, you know, find out what it takes to, you know, to have some intrinsic motivation in that time because there were so many things you weren't allowed to do that uh, it challenged our guys to do some things, whether it's on their own or, <clears throat> you know, of creating things themselves. What are you most excited to learn over the next couple of weeks as we get out to higher ground? I think the, the some of the the competitive spirit, and he said, "Well, that's a part of your, you know, your culture." Uh, but I think that it's always different when when guys get thrust into a position. And I say that at times we gotta we gotta list guys as starters, and then give them an opportunity to see how they react and respond, and list a guy as a second, and and you know see how he reacts and responds. And those are all the things that you know you're trying to assess and, and how guys are growing and growing up. And uh, so I'm I'm really excited to see you know how some of those guys take those opportunities both positively or in one where maybe they're, it's not a positive. I'm, I'm all of a sudden marked as a two and, you know, I should be running with the ones and, and uh, you know, find a way to continue to grow. So I think a lot of those things that you'd say you have them every year that we didn't have as many of last year, just with some of the, some of the guys that we had returning, um, that it just brings a different kind of uh, excitement, energy to, uh, to your camp. Five new assistant coaches. Is, is this a good time? For that to happen because there is so much change so much turnover like not that there's ever a good time yeah. to lose good people it is it's it's difficult but i think that sometimes with you know having success and maybe even the season that you know we did in particular last year it's it's great to have some new people because you know i guess there isn't that in town there isn't that hangover um they're new and they're kind of you know maybe even put in a situation where you know, they've got to try to get their units and their group and our team to perform above where they performed last year. And that can be stressful. And, uh, you know, so I think it is nice and good uh, in some of those ways to have some newer people and, you know, just that freshness to, to all that they're doing and even a greater challenge to them um, 
if they're intrinsically motivated, which I believe they are, that you know will, will be a little bit of pressure they apply to themselves. Outside of this bubble, it's a very interesting time in college sports. Conference realignment is raging. The NIL is is being figured out. The transfer portal now they're talking about getting rid of. You know, you can transfer as many times as you want now. As a head coach, how do you look at all this and and navigate? What is really still an unknown in a lot of phases? It is. <clears throat> I think it's kind of like the game. It's evolving evolving a little bit faster, maybe in some different ways than us as coaches probably expected in college. But it, nonetheless, it is evolving, and you got to continue to evolve with it. And, uh, you know, it's hard when there are any parameters because you don't know what you're evolving with and to. Um, but I still think that each year right now until we – you know, get some you know some parameters on whether it's NIL or transfers or things like that. You're just going to have to know that you know it could be different each and every year. And um, you know, so for your kids in general, it's different. And and how you're handling them and what they're hearing and seeing, I think it's just a, a great reminder that unless you got an incredible relationship with them, you know, through all these you know evolving times, uh, you're going to have a real hard time maintaining, sustaining, and developing them if you if uh, if you don't. NIL. I had a college basketball assistant tell me, right now this is like signing a contract and they're agreeing to a contract in Sweden. And then you go overseas and you get there and what you agreed to isn't exactly what you're getting. Does there need to maybe be a uniform, like, if you're going to put this on the table, it's got to be in writing or... <clears throat> Because there's a lot of promises that are being laid out there right now that who yep. knows if they'll be Well, it's, it's unique because I think in the past when people make promises, you were making promises with numbers. You were making promises with, you know, okay, playing this guy's a chance yeah. to start or playing time. And in some ways, maybe there are some promises with, you know, things that they could do or take care of you, um, you know, whether it's legal or illegal. Now, you know, a lot of things are it's legal. All legal. <laughs> and the uniqueness now is we just talked about the relationship is so key in, in these times, I think. Not that they weren't key before, but even more so now with all the things that are on the plate, that now these kids are going to be walking in and, and maybe have been promised something that's not going to happen. And I think that's where we got a real issue. And uh, we see it. I see it. Uh, I hear about it. You know, people being promised X amount of dollars to come here, but they're not seeing anything in writing. And then when they get there, I got a real belief that that's not going to happen. And when it does, what's that going to do to the relationship, yeah. you know, or what this guy, so to speak, is supposed to be getting and a, and a different recruit is supposed to be getting. And I think those are just times that, at least in the NFL, works in the NFL, yeah, well, there's a contract. Everybody gets to see it is what it is. There's a value to things. Um, right now, it's just a lot of hearsay, and I think it's going to be really difficult for, for universities and coaching staffs to, you know, hold to what it is that they're promising. And then for young men and kids to trust and believe into some of those people if what they were promised isn't what's happening. Speaking of lots of money, have you been able to keep an eye on the training camps around the NFL? Because your guys' names are popping up a lot so far. I, seeing some of it, I, I, ask, I usually ask Coach Collins or Coach Brady if, if uh, hey, what are you hearing? Um, but obviously there's I, I hear a lot of, a lot of things uh, – you know, whether it's Sauce or, or Alec Pierce, Mickey's, I've heard yeah. a, a lot about. Brian Cook. Um, Brian Cook, I've, I've heard a bit. Uh, Did quite you see a bit the video about. with him and yeah, Kelsey? Yeah, with him yeah. and Kelsey. So uh, all those things you try to follow through social media, um, you know. But uh, we'll, uh, that'll be interesting because it'll be, it'll be one of those things that may be part of our night meetings just to, to keep track on our guys because that's something that uh, we know our kids are interested in too. 